On today's show, the story of a Minnesotan making a difference. Carol Henderson dedicates all his time to protecting Minnesota's wild critters. We go north of the border to visit some of Canada's wildest terrain. Exploring Quetico's canoe country comes with a few ups and downs. And women get wild on Winnie. This is a fish tale come true. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hey everybody, Laura and I welcome you to Minnesota Bound. Up first, we meet a Minnesotan making a difference. Carol Henderson dedicated most of his working career to promoting and protecting many of Minnesota's wild critters. That's exactly why Ron Shera set out to better understand Carol's legacy. <laughs> Minnesotans Making a Difference, brought to you by the Partners Group and YZ, over three generations of unmatched service. I, I took most of the pictures used in this book. Looking back at the Tweety Bird photographs he's taken, the books he's written, Carol Henderson didn't miss much in the world of Minnesota bird life. It may surprise a few people, but when, when you grow up on a farm in Iowa, in the 50s like I did. You know, we were close to the land in terms of hunting and trapping, and I loved hunting rabbits and pheasants and fox squirrels. I never saw a bluebird when I was growing up on the farm, and we didn't feed the birds. Until his recent retirement, Carol Henderson was the conservation voice for Minnesota's Tweety Birds, non-game critters, leading the non-game program for the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. I took that over in uh, January of 1977, and I stayed in that same position all those 41 years. When we started, my annual budget for everything, including my salary, was about $25,000 per year. And now the program has a staff of approximately 16 people and an annual budget of about two and a half million dollars per year. And Henderson's passion for the job was unmatched for those 41 years. I, I've written 13 books from the time I started with the DNR. Five of them were for the DNR. How many books have you written about bird feeding? Just bird feeding? Uh, two books on bird feeding. Okay. One of them is Wild About Birds, the DNR Bird Feeding Guide, and that's been incredibly popular. The DNR what? Bird Feeding Guide. 100,000 copies. Yeah, and I should mention that the royalties from those all go back to the non-game program. I think the state has received probably over a quarter million dollars in royalties on my books over the years, so I, I've been the single biggest donor to the non-game program, I think, over the period of my career. Henderson has played a major role in restoring trumpeter swans. Once, he even flew to Alaska to pick up swan eggs to hatch in Minnesota. From the the initial release of about 370 trumpeter swans, our statewide population is now up to probably over 25,000. And, and I never would have thought that would happen just within my own lifetime. His books promoted like building bluebird houses, helping bluebirds make a comeback. Birds are just so enjoyable for, in so many ways. I've tried to do, make a difference in two ways. One is to reach people with information about conservation and stewardship to inspire them to become involved and to care and to provide them with helpful information on how they can do that by feeding the birds, by making bird houses, by landscaping for wildlife, all of these different things so it, it enriches their lives. One more tweet, if you will. We Minnesotans also have been enriched by Carol Henderson. It's just really fun to see how this touches people. Coming up, a wild ride as we explore Canada's Quetico. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Minnesota's Select GMC Dealers. 
by the yard maintenance-free outdoor furniture, running Aces Casino Hotel and Racetrack, and by Aluma Craft Boats. Plenty of people love to get out to explore wild places. Canada's Coetico is one such destination. We head north to discover this Canadian gem. Water might be Anacokin's attraction, but the railroad really put this town on Canada's map. It's kind of a hidden gem, not a lot of people know about it. Anacokin sits tucked away 60 miles straight north of Minnesota's Arrowhead. Boomtown, actually. Largest open pit mine in the world. Metal mining kept Anacokin hopping for more than 80 years. In the 1980s, the mines finally gave up the ghost. By all accounts, Anacokin should have disappeared right along with the mines, but a single industry still keeps this town afloat. Quetico, a 1.2 million acre raw wilderness, Canada's version of the Boundary Waters. It's a beautiful piece of real estate. Canoe Canada sits smack dab in downtown Anacoka, an Ontario institution and living museum of sorts. Those paddles tell a really cool, cool story. You can read back, 72, 70, 85. Tales documented by people who dare to explore. Although some stories appear better left untold. Sleeping bag and a stuff sack. Jeremy Dixon here. runs Canoe Canada. So here's your food pack, guys. We have your lunch for the next two days and your steaks. Steaks. Steaks tonight. Yeah, you guys are having actually filet mignon tonight. New trip. Yeah. Steaks. Enjoyable. You have to make it somewhat soft, right? I mean, there are folks who just want to eat peanut butter sandwiches, but I'm not one of them. You're <laughs> His dad started the business 40 years ago. See, Bud Dixon worked in the Quetico long ago caring for portages between lakes. And he started bumping into everybody who was coming in from Minnesota. He said, well, how come my town doesn't get any of the benefit from this? So Bud bought Anna Koken's old tire factory and opened an outfitting business. But he did it because he loved Quetico and he loved his town. These days... Okay, guys, come on in. Hey, Ron, come on in. Jeremy carries the torch. While he no longer guides... For this trip, we're just gonna go in. He still maps out a trip or two from the parking lots about 400 yards for people who like to explore Quetico's northern entry points if you're gonna see if you're gonna see a moose he'd be hanging out here in Stanton Bay in the water I'm excited and so is Ryan Johnson we are both Quetico newbies our know-how will come from this guy <laughs> guide Ron Cameron I really had my first taste of actual tripping in high school with the uh, outdoor education program here. And I think that, you know, anybody who's ever tasted it, even just the tiniest bit, just wants more. You can either grab there or here, whichever, and just go, boink. And you just, yeah, there's a little bit of a, a pop. How's it feel? This trip will prove to be all about the ups <laughs> and the periodic downs of wilderness travel. But why do you do this? Why do you go? It's an addiction to experience raw, untouched, real wilderness. Coming up next, we paddle out to a remote island and get our camp set up. He's out of breath. And then, go in search of a Quetico monster. Closed captioning is brought to you by Maple Grove Lock and Safe, your premier Liberty safe dealer.
Canada's Quetico region remains one of the world's most pristine wilderness areas. Now, if you ever visit, you can expect a little bit of excitement. It can come from any single cast. In pure wilderness, you move at a different pace. I'm not gonna say it's for everybody, but I think everybody, whether they know it or not, loves to get back to basics. Basics mean camp on a small island, a giant rock with a name. Welcome to the Hilton. For two days, we will live here. Our only means, the constant work. And you know what, that's okay. <laughs> He's out of breath. We set up camp and paddle a bit more before dinner. See, a bit of a reputation lures us to this Quetico Lake Bay. Every once in a blue moon, Come get you some. a wild rumor proves true. There's so much fish, so much fish, and they're just ready to eat. We heard Canada's Quetico fishing might be a bit above average. <laughs> Little did we know it would be so good, oh. we'd have to eat on the run, or in this case, on the path. We just can't stop fishing. Some hit at it? When that thing hit. Oh my God, buddy. where's your net? I was a little bit in shock. Total understatement. This is seriously the biggest smallmouth I've ever caught. My. <laughs> Dude, that thing's seven pounds. <laughs> it just seemed like a joke how big that thing was. Unbelievable. What the heck is that? That is a pig. Oh my God. I'd like to think I was famous before Basquatch, but it kind of just brought me to a different level. Ryan's seven plus pound smallmouth bass leaves me speechless. That's, that's gotta be a seven pound smallmouth, <laughs> I bet. This is, uh, this is amazing. It's, it's, it's pretty phenomenal, just how many, how many fish there are. And just one called Basquatch. <laughs> Give the camera a thumbs up, Tommy. <laughs> is that for real? Please tell me your video camera's rolling and it's on. Oh, it's on. <laughs> in this fish and in this moment, we capture the essence of wild, untamed wilderness. Exactly the reason we explore. Out here, it's, it's a different kind of currency. It's a different, it's a different way of life. You know, you, you worry about fish and firewood, not money, not your job, not stocks, not the price of oil, nothing. The whole experience, camp, the food, the atmosphere, mother nature, how beautiful it is, and to see what's been created up here, it's just breathtaking. I suppose that's why Ron vows to always be first out of bed. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things is getting up in the morning. The mist is just starting to come off the water. There's no wind, just the sound of your paddle. It's, uh, it's, it's heaven. <laughs> that's Quetico's mark. Literal heaven on earth. I mean, just look around. It's just amazing. It's just so beautiful. Maybe that's why so many paddles hang on the walls back in town. A tribute of sorts. One more means. Maybe one more way we document and celebrate adventure. You know, anybody who's ever tasted it, even just the tiniest bit, just wants more.
Still ahead, a fishing club made up of some of Minnesota's most dedicated anglers. On this trip, no men allowed. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Connecticut. Adams Pest Control. Rave Sports. Your local carrier dealer. And by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. It's time for Wild on Winnie. What is that, a new fishing event? Not exactly. Ron Shera discovered a new tradition brainstormed by Minnesota anglers. Just watch. Just another day for fishing? Uh, not really. Whenever and wherever anglers gather, there's always a little friendly competition. Who will catch the most or biggest? Her first year this year, I bet she's all nervous. Nervous, of course. This time it's the women anglers of Winnie going to float to answer the age old question who's the best angler or luckiest? This is my second year with the Women on Winnie tournament, but I've been fishing for 25, so. We have to run the boats, we have to net the fish, we have to bait the hooks. Everything that, you know, the men would do, we, the women have to do. So it's just for girls, it's a fun time. It's a competitive tournament, but yet it's fun. You know, it's like I tell, I try to get a lot of women that I know to join, come in and fish it because it's a fun tournament. I think it's special because, you know, uh, some girls fish in pontoons from large boats to small boats. It's pretty good competition out there. Everybody's pretty good fishermen, so. And so it begins, a fishing contest for women only. But on this day, the wind has Lake Winnie stirred up. We don't have any water in the boat this year. Famed fishing guide Tom Newstrom is the tournament director and, well, fishing coach. Yeah, we started out uh, 16 years ago and we actually started out with only about 12 boats. Today, uh, for instance, we have 22 teams competing, and that's 44 women. 44 hardcore fishermen that want to go out and catch some fish and have fun. They can go out and catch walleyes, northern perch, they have a great time. And I'll tell you what, they can put the guys to shame with some of the boats that they've got. These girls bring in fish and they have a wonderful time doing it. You know, Winnie is, uh, is probably one of the best known walleye lakes in the state. Uh, it has a very diversified fishery. You can catch a lot of nice northerns, you can catch big perch. So it gives the girls an opportunity to catch different species of fish. And that's why our awards are kind of geared that way too. Over the years, the Women on Winnie tournament has produced lots of fish. Some big and some small have been hauled in. Under the rules, a big perch might win as much as a big walleye. But on this day, it seems only the wind was winning on Winnie. We're going over to school or something. A weed, I don't know. <laughs> right now, anything we can. Right. Yay! Ooh, we're keeping that one. It's the biggest we are. one we've got. <laughs> we're keeping it! It's the keeper. <laughs> Tom, the fishing coach, offers advice, but the wind and waves combine for a tough bite. You're in the lake, right? I know, I don't know. You catch a northern, make sure you keep it. Yeah. On this day, even the local fishing experts weren't catching much. You got anything at all? What do you got? Awesome. A good laugh is always worth reeling in when the fish don't bite. As every angler soon learns, there's more to fishing than catching. Now that is my kind of fishing event. Pretty fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, that about does it for us. We will see you back here next week. In the meantime, don't forget to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433.
To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook 